Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, this week we're back down in Melbourne, Florida at the American Muscle Car Museum. This is an amazing place, and Mark Pylock has collected some incredible cars over the years. He's up north of 400 here. I'm telling you, he's got everything. It's an American Muscle Car Museum. It's got trucks, too. So we're going to do a couple sport pickups from the late 80s, early 90s. An 89 Dodge Dakota Shelby pickup and an unbelievable 91 GMC Cyclone. These are both incredible trucks, so I say, let's get trucking. I had a new Corvette sitting at home, and I'd still <laughs> drive this. This is back even in the late 90s. Oh, geez, it's got 37 miles on it now. High mileage. High mileage. Now. <laughs> Time to find another one. Hey, Mark. Great to see you again. Great man. to see you, Dennis. <laughs> you know, it's always fun when I come down here. And it's, of course, the American Muscle Car Museum. But you also, you do not discriminate against American muscle trucks. No, we have American <laughs> muscle trucks, American muscle cars, and even American muscle SUVs. You, you got it all. Got it all. <laughs> if no it's got muscle, it's here. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Well, that's what we got. We got a couple really kind of interesting trucks here from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, a time that wasn't real muscular. No. Nope. So we've got an, an 89, uh, you know, Shelby Dodge pickup. And then you've got a 91 GMC Cyclone. When you think of the 80s, uh, you don't think of performance. You know, the, kind of the bright spot there was the Buick Grand National. Yep, the GNXs. And that was about it. You know, it was, kind of, it was a dark time, you know. But, but these things are, they kind of flew under the radar to a certain extent. Let's start with this baby. So Carol Shelby uh, kind of came back and linked up with his old buddy, Lee Iacocca, yeah. to try and breathe some life into kind of a flagging Chrysler Corporation at the time. And this is one of the things that they, uh, they came up with. Yep. Carol Shelby went ahead. He was brought on board by Lee Iacocca. He said, we need to get some performance going again. Yeah. So, of course, Shelby was with Lee Iacocca and Chrysler back in the 80s. And, of course, if you remember, the first new Dodge Shelby they came out with was the new Shelby Charger. Mm -hmm. And people thought, wow, that's like the new GT350 Shelby Mustang. And then before you know it, they were taking the Omnis and turning them into GLHSs. Which were amazing cars, by the way. Which actually <laughs> were a pretty hot little, <laughs> they were, you know, a kind of box. They okay. were surprisingly they, hot. They were pretty peppy, okay, and they were economical. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving brand new an 83 Shelby Charger. Uh -huh. And of course, I had an original 66 GT350 at that time, and I said, well, there's no comparison between the two, which there wasn't, but it was still a peppy little car. You yeah. know what I mean? That little 2.2, and I know it only had 107 horsepower, okay? But you know, you got on it, hey, you could, you know, you look pretty good going zero to 60 <laughs> in that. Now, now, don't expect to go much over 60, <laughs> but hey, up to 60, it was pretty, it was pretty sporty. Right there. Pretty sporty. And by the late, 80s okay you started seeing slowly in america you know this this growth of more pickup trucks uh-huh yeah and and of course today in the world let's face it in the united states pickup trucks are a third of all new vehicles yeah it's sold. a pickup truck world uh pickup truck world they're like luxury vehicles you yeah, get yeah. in a, a pickup truck today and you drive it you know you'd swear you're in at the top of the line luxury vehicle but back in the day, well, you know, like I have a 55 Cameo and I got a 59 Apache Chevy, and I'll tell you, those ride like pickup trucks. They are, tr okay. they're still trucks. They're you know? really a they truck. They looked pretty good. They looked they, great. They were trucks. They were trucks. You don't want to drive cross country in a pickup <laughs> truck like that. Now, if you want to go to the farm, go out in the woods, hey, perfect vehicle. And look good doing it. And look good doing it, okay? <laughs> but, but finally by the the late 80s, okay, they started coming back. Let's let's look at this performance pickup. And so in 1989, it was the one only year that they came out with a quote, Shelby Dodge pickup. And, and Dodge actually built 1,475. You had two color choices. You had, of course, as Shelby called it, exotic red, mm, okay. Yeah. Really, it was the standard factory Looks red. Dodge, okay? <laughs> but, you know, you got to put a little spice to it, so exotic red. Or you could get bright white. And uh -huh. so they made 480 bright whites. And, of course, the balance, which was the most common, was Shelby's exotic red. That being said, 
he wanted to improve the standard vehicle. Standard for the Dakotas were typically like a four or six cylinder power plant. Right. So knowing Carroll Shelby, he loved his V8s. He said, what's the biggest power plant we can throw into this Dakota? Well, he found out he could throw that old 318 cubic inch engine in it. So this thing is, still has a 318? Three, has still a 318, How has a 5.2 liter. And the factory engine itself produced 170 horsepower. Uh -huh. um, he went ahead, of course, made his modifications. He put an electric fan in instead of the typical uh, belt-driven right. fan assembly. Gained five horsepower there. Uh, performance upgrades, of course, with the wheels. He put a front sway bar, gas shocks all around. Beefed up the braking a little bit. It's actually fuel injected, but but with that kind of carburetor looking fuel injection system. Correct. Right? Correct. And and so it was geared towards let's get a little better fuel economy. And and not only did he do that, but he also went ahead and put in a custom interior. So I know this interior is all wrapped in the original factory plastic, but if you look at it, he did a nice upgrade to the standard uh -huh. Dakota interior. Um, he thought these trucks would really sell well. Uh, from a performance point of view, and at its time in 1989, the performance numbers were not bad. Uh, zero to 60, today would be horrible, 8.7 seconds. Mm -hmm. Quarter mile, 16 and a half seconds, mm -hmm. at only 83 miles per hour. So it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't lightning fast. It was not at all fast. Um, did have a cool stripe on it though. You had great graphics. <laughs> great, okay? great graphics. Kind of like, you know, let, let's try to make it look as fast as possible right. and exotic red. And Dodge was hoping to hit a home run like they had done in the late 70s with the Little Red Express pickup. Right, right. And those were a very popular pickup, really stylish pickup. And so he was hoping to repeat the same storyline again. Didn't quite get that traction. Though, Didn't did get it? that traction. Yeah. Didn't get it. Uh, but this vehicle here, what's really unique about it, it has 28 original miles. Well, I was going to say, I mean, we, got, we still got a bunch of scribbling on the, on the windshield and there's, you know, there's numbers on the headlight and stuff. I mean, this, you said 28 miles. This thing hasn't even been dealer prepped. Is that correct? Correct. In other words, you know, here at the American Muscle Car Museum, I pride myself in collecting as many ultra low mileage original cars as possible. And, and I consider ultra low mileage original if you have less than 100 original miles. That's and today, pretty low. And today we have over 210 vehicles that are just like this vehicle. Really? So less like, than 100 original miles. So roughly half the collection, because you're, you're north of 400 vehicles. Little, little more than 50% of the collection is considered- Less than 100 miles. Less than 100 original miles. And, and the beauty of this vehicle, there was a Dodge dealer up in South Dakota, and there was a dealer who said, you know what, Carroll Shelby, back when he sold those Shelby Mustangs in the 60s, you know, if I would have just bought one of those and put it away, look what Shelby Mustangs were worth by 1989. Quite, quite a lot even then. Yeah, like, you know, I remember I had a, a 66 Shelby GT350, 45,000 original miles. Sold it for $40,000 way back then Woo. when I started my first Woo. business, okay? And you looked at it and you said, geez, I bought that car brand new, okay, for five grand. I bought it from the original owner. I paid five grand for it way back in 1979. He probably figured, wow, that was a great vehicle. I bought it brand new, kept it 13 years, drove it 41,000 miles and sold it for exactly pretty much what I paid for it. And I, I bought it for five, sold it for 40, you know, basically 10 years later. So the Dodge dealer said, man, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to collect one of every Shelby Dodge. Whatever Dodge puts with a Shelby name, I'm buying them. How'd so, that work out? Actually, it worked out really well for me, especially, <laughs> okay? Because he collected six vehicles, five of which had less than 100 original miles. Never this, dealer The dealership prepared. did. The dealership did. Wow. And so I actually uh, bought all of these vehicles now uh, just a little less than 10 years ago. Okay. And so I actually bought them at an auction. And of course, there was nobody really looking at them. So my typical price I paid was 13, 14, 15, 16,000 a vehicle. In that whole, in that whole in block. In that whole block. And there was one car and another car and another car. And, and I was the only person bidding. I was going to say, did you have any competition? No, not really. no, not really. You know what I mean? And, and actually, the pickup truck went for the most amount of money. 
Um, it went, I think, for around 17,000 something. And because uh, you could have more utility with a pickup truck, of course. And but I was like, hey, I already bought five. I'm not going to let this one get by me. So, of course, I was the top bidder. And the guy looked at me. I remember he was sitting right opposite me. And he says, you're buying all these others. I said, yeah, I'm buying them for a car museum. And he's like, oh, go ahead, buy it. I, he's I'm just going to use it as a work truck. For the guys. <laughs> oh, and I was whoa. like, no, no, no. I says, I, I want to protect it and save it. And, you know, yeah. you know, you'll never find another one with this many, you know, delivery miles. And uh, so I ended up buying all of them. And uh, when I actually brought them up here and, and Ed actually saw all of them, he was like, where did all these Shelby Dodges come from? Well, actually, uh, let me tell you the story. <laughs> they kind of just all showed up at once. Yeah, they right? all showed up. So, <laughs> so the dealer who you know was way back, um, when he bought these all back in the 80s, um, if you're still alive or if you worked at that dealership in Millbank, South Dakota, you're welcome to come here and we'll give you a free tour at the American Muscle Car Museum and, and show you all the vehicles that that owner bought brand new, put away, never dealer prepped. And so today they're sitting here and now it's been 30 plus years. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's really, well, it looks brand new. Well, I guess that's because it is, it is, right? Yeah. And, and the beauty is everything that we kept, you know, that we, we purchased, we, we keep in brand new condition. So, uh -huh. You know, the buildings are all air conditioned, dehumidified, okay? All the air is HEPA filtered. Uh, the vehicles are kept in running condition, every vehicle. And most people, if they get a bunch of cars, they just pack them away into a building and they're never seen or touched for years. And then they finally pull a vehicle out and they go, okay, what do we need to do to get this running? Yeah, which is a big job. Which is sat there and if it's not climate controlled, they've rusted just yes, sitting there, your chrome's yes, pitted, it's yes. like, and they, they, they don't, if you don't put them up right, they, they go bad fast. They go bad fast. Well, you know, you still got the, it's, it's faded, but you still got the window sticker on this. Which, have, have the old dot matrix printer. I'll say, like. which, and, it, and she went for uh, 16670. Yeah. Can I open it up? Yeah, go ahead, open it up. Yeah. So, uh, interior wise, it's under plastic. Yep. But that was the trick interior you could get at the time, right? Yeah, that was how that, they upgraded it. it. Yeah. They gave you the upgrade in the seat. And you got the fat wheel. Yeah, and you have the leather-wrapped steering wheel. They're each numbered, too. Yes. This is number six. Number six of 1,475 that were built in total. So this was definitely built on the first day of the assembly line. Wow. Which back in the day, like they used to always say, never buy anything made the very first day. Yeah. <laughs> because they're a, learning as they're building there's it. There's a reason for that. <laughs> yes, there's a reason. Dash-wise, is this pretty much what the, you know, the, the stock truck would have had? Or I guess they... Basically 100% stock for the dash, except for the little plaque that they put in there. Uh -huh. But back in the late 80s, Sport pickup trucks, the Dakota, when it came out, was a huge selling success for Dodge. Uh -huh. But there was definitely a market for this smaller size pickup. And so, um, you know, this was a good selling vehicle. Of course, it wasn't as successful as they would have liked being the Shelby, of course. Yeah. And, and the final customization of all this was actually done by Shelby American. In other words, um, Dodge didn't do all of the work. Basically, like in the old days, Dodge would build a standard truck and send it ship off. it off to Shelby American, and Shelby American, Carol Shelby, would do his customization. Do, do that voodoo he do. Yep, which he did on this. And then, of course, they would be turned back over to the dealer network for sales. Uh, so number six of 1,475 ever built. Um, I've been told that this is the lowest original mileage Shelby Dakota pickup truck in the world. Wow. Um, if somebody has one with less than 28 original miles, please contact us at the American Muscle Car Museum because we'd love to see it and take some photos <laughs> hey, I of know, it. I know you. You'd love to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, maybe. Who knows? You know, I always buy a duplicate. You know, Every now and then if I find something with less original miles. You get it. I'll buy it and then I'll eventually sell off the duplicate or donate it to charity or whatever the case wow. may be. We'll go ahead, open up the hood. Good old hood prop. Yeah, got the old hood prop. So that's a 318, which actually fits pretty nicely in there. Yeah, gives you actually still quite a bit of room to work on it compared to a more modern car today. You know, a yeah, mo modern does. car would have a lot less room underneath the hood. And, uh, it, you know, it's kind of interesting that everything under here is, well, with the exception of the, the bay itself, is black. Yep. I mean, the, the, 
And of nope. course, Shelby did the air cleaner. Shows you has yeah. the Shelby V8, uh, 175 horsepower, 270 foot pounds of torque. So still not a bad little pickup truck. No, but you know, I mean, black block, air cleaner, master cylinder, I mean, everything is blacked out. Correct. It actually looked kind of cool. Yeah. And a 318 is, uh, uh, you know, they've been using that. They used that for years. Oh, this this engine's been around for 30 plus years. It was always, it wasn't all that fast necessarily, it was extremely reliable. Yeah, it, it was a very reliable engine. It was kind of a lot like, you know, the 289 for Ford. Plymouth mm -hmm. had, you know, the 318 or, you know, Dodge Chrysler Plymouth and very dependable engine, easy to work on. Yeah. Um, you just weren't going to be the fastest person in town. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah. But, you know, Shelby always makes things look cool. And, it, you know, you open it up and it, it looks cool. Yeah. I, I do love the Shelby V8 on the air cleaner. Yeah. Anything but, he could do to, a little bit of marketing, get a little more yeah. promotion, a little bit more sales. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I mean, you got all of 28 miles on it. Could we roll maybe another half a mile or three oh, yeah. quarters we'll, coming we'll, up and down with yeah, the ride? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely put a few miles. All right, on well, let's it. close yeah, it up we'll and go ahead and see pull what, it down. See what a brand new Watch Shelby fingers. pickup looks like. There all we go. Right. Good. Let's do it. Okay. Starts right up. Yep. Nice sounding. That does have a nice little rumble to it. All right. Here we go. Okay. Boy, a plastic wrap steering wheel. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a surprisingly tight steering actually. These are nice trucks. You know, the old Chryslers, of course, back in the 60s and 70s, you had a lot more corrosion. But by the late 80s, you know, give Chrysler Corporation credit. They were building a pretty nice vehicle. Getting it worked out. They were getting the, the problems worked out. And, you know, of course, they had to be fuel efficient. Yeah. You know, and, and so they were heading in the right direction. And, you know, Lee Iacocca did a great job at Chrysler and turned them around. and. Carol Shelby helped them out, and it was a, a winning team. It, it was, and it was such an interesting combination and an interesting time because, again, it was really a dark time for performance. And Shelby comes in; he didn't have a lot to work with. You know, I mean, these the little Omnis, the, the, the you know the, the Charger, which was you know hard to call a Charger. Small engines, uh, you know, but he still. He still squeezed everything out of them he possibly could. Could, yeah. And and those, like I said, those Shelby Chargers, I remember driving one brand new, and it was actually a, a beautiful little vehicle. And, you know, getting, you know, fresh out of graduate school, I was like, you know, this isn't that bad of a car. Well, you know, they, they were kind of eye-catching. Uh, you know, they certainly weren't, you know, they, they took some heat back in the day because they, you know, Shelby and all that. And it was faster, but it wasn't that fast. Yeah. But they did look pretty cool. It was a little peppy, you know, vehicle, and uh, but it got great gas mileage, uh -huh. had pretty good reliability, and so it was a winning combination. You know, Lee Iacocca with that little 2.2 liter engine, man, they built a lot of vehicles, and and then of course when they came out with the minivan, they went from saving the corporation to becoming a very profitable corporation. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Lee Iacocca had worked his magic. Yeah, he was a pretty amazing guy. Yeah, I never met him in person. I've met Carol Shelby in person. That, well, that was an amazing guy. Yeah, he had to be in his position. What impressed me about Carol Shelby was just what a gracious person he was. I mean, this to, to a lot of folks, Carol Shelby's a god, you know, and and yet he was down to earth and uh, you know treated everybody with with respect. Yeah. It was. It was really nice. Well, he came from a very humble background. Yeah. And, and he never lost that through his entire life. Yeah. You often don't see that with today's celebrities. Uh, no. But back in the day, he, I remember he'd go to the different, you know, SAC national conventions, and he was always very friendly and would he talk was. to people. He'd and, autograph anything. Yep, autograph anything, get your photo taken, and... You know, sometimes it's kind of like, gee, just give the guy a poor break, you know. <laughs> Let him go to the restroom. You don't have to bother him inside. He'll be right back out. You know, he's not going anywhere. He was an amazing guy, too, and just uh, uh, driven 
you know, uh, all about performance. You know, I'm Carroll Shelby, and I build race cars. Yeah. And he was also a good marketeer. Yes, he was. He knew how to sell something. So, you know, in his, I guess, Texas way of doing things. This thing's this thing's kind of fun. I, this I is a nice riding truck. Now, did you have one of these that you you used? No, or? but no. a friend of mine who I worked with had, had one. one. So I used to go to lunch with him once a week. We, you know, once a week we go to lunch. One week I drive. One week he'd drive. Uh huh. And uh, and I rode in his truck. I don't know a hundred different times going to lunch or whatever. You know, you drive two, five, eight miles, whatever, away from work and come back and. And I was like, man, this is a nice little pickup truck. Well, it's smooth, it, uh, it, and it's, it's tight steering. Yep. Uh, did Shelby do any upgrades on the suspension? Or he was did. it pretty much, he did, okay. Yeah, he did, yeah. Because it doesn't, and it sure doesn't either ride or drive like a truck. It doesn't give you that rough ride whatsoever. No. It's not a bouncy ride uh, with the gas shocks all around. And then of course with the front sway bar um, and you know, his other little tweaking that he does. This turned out to be a really nice vehicle. And you know, I could see you driving this every day to work. Yeah, how many did they make? Uh, 1,475. So they're really quite rare. Not too many, and, and most of them, let's face it, were bought and really used yeah. as pickups. Yeah. Um, you know, that was the main purpose, and, and if you didn't want to have that big full-size pickup, uh, this was ideal, and, and younger families today, they find out you do need a, either an SUV or a little pickup. But I don't want this monster. But I don't want this huge monster size because it doesn't fit in the garage. And yeah. if you look at new homes today, the garages keep getting smaller and smaller. You know, you're lucky if you get 20 feet by 20 feet. And you don't have room if you put in a full-size pickup. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, this is nice. It's peppy, handles nice, rides nice, but I got to tell you, I've never driven one of those Cyclones, and that thing is just calling out to me. Oh, the Cyclone's going to be amazing. Compared to this, there's a world of difference. Let's go be amazed. You're, you'll be amazed. <laughs> Don't be afraid to give it some gas. It won't be the first time, and it won't be the last. <laughs> Ooh, you, you can chirp it in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun. You know, the pause attraction, uh, you get a second gear shift chirp. Yeah, you had you two, respect two that. pieces of rubber. <laughs> two pieces. I love it. A lot of fun. <laughs> Carol knew what he was doing. Yeah. So the, the Shelby's pretty nice. I mean, for 175 horse, which doesn't sound like much, it, it's got some get up and go. It's a little bit of get up and go. It's not like today's modern high performance pickup, no. but back in the day, Hey, it was a nice little sport pickup, and for $16,000, you know, you're not driving a Ferrari, okay? <laughs> you know, you're driving a, a Dodge Dakota, you know, Shelby pickup. So for so, sixteen grand, you not can't so go bad. wrong. But speaking of driving a Ferrari, now we're going to step it up in performance and everything, and we jump to this 91 GMC Cyclone. This thing is a super truck in a lot of respects. And the other thing about this truck that's real different, because that's not even dealer prepped, 28 miles. This one is one you used as a daily driver. Is that right? Correct. This vehicle has 56,000 miles on it. Wow. And this is a vehicle I used as a daily driver. And I'll tell you a little bit story of how I got into the Cyclones. Way back, of course, 1987, the big news, of course, was Buick and their GNSs. Yeah, yeah, Grand And you know, the Grand National, they had that 3.8, okay? And of course, the standard Grand National was about 245 horse. Of course, when they built the 500 GNXs, they bumped it up to uh, a total of 300 horsepower. Right, right. Uh, they had sent the cars out and ASC had massaged the, you know, quote, turbocharger, increased the boost to 16, you know, PSI. And so they could hit 300 horse. And back in 87, the Buick GNXs were the quote the fastest production well, car. They in the were. World. They were the uh, they were the sleeper surprise of the 80s. Correct, especially in a Buick. People didn't expect it in a Buick. Yeah. And so, having seen that, well, back speed forward of four years later, I saw that GMC because I was a Chevy truck man. I saw that GMC was coming out with a new Cyclone, 
and it was going to be a 4.3 liter, which was, you know, the upgrade in the S10 Blazer. You had the 2.8 yeah. liter, and then, of course, you had the 4.3. But they were saying that they were going to do the same that they did with the GNX. They were going to go ahead and turbocharge it, give it a liquid intercooler, and have 280 horsepower. And I was like, man, 280 that, that's horsepower. Nice. That's not quite a GNX at 300, but it's more than the 245 for the standard Grand National. And then, so what really sold me on the car is back then, Car and Driver did an article. And it compared a brand new 1991 GMC Psycho, uh -huh. okay? And of course, if you loved black, that was the color you wanted to order because that's <laughs> the only color you could buy from the factory. Just like the Grand Nationals. <laughs> yes, just like the Grand Nationals. If you had it, it had to be black, Yep. okay? Um, now, there is a little twist. Uh, there was a little over half a dozen cars that Marlboro actually purchased had painted red mm. the marlboro red and those were known as the quote marlboro cigarette commercial gmc cyclones but that was not a factory produced vehicle right. that was a quote advertising produced vehicle but in total they built 2995 1991 gmc cyclones and three that were actually titled as 1992 but they were all black now the article i'm mentioning is, you know, back as a kid, okay, and a young adult, you know, I always got my car magazines and every month they would come and I'd get car and driver and road and track and you'd flip through them and, and they had an article in there, the new GMC Cyclone against the brand new 1991 Ferrari 348 TS, okay? I've, yeah, I've seen that. And, <laughs> and so, you know, you're looking at the article and you go, man, brand new Ferrari, hey, 296 horsepower, 32 valve V8, all aluminum engine, okay. Top speed, 171 miles per hour. Man, what a fabulous car with a five-speed manual. Man, that Ferrari is just gonna smoke the <laughs> out of this GMC. What the hell are the Americans thinking of, okay? That Ferrari is $125,000, and you're gonna take a 25, thousand dollar quote s10 sonoma pickup against the ferrari ah man what a lapping stock you're gonna be well they actually line the cars up let's see what they actually do well this gmc cyclone i gotta give the engineers credit at general motors they were ahead of their time they thought that there's a true market for a luxury pickup truck that people actually spend as much money or more for a luxury pickup nah. truck than a regular car. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and, and you know, back in, in the early 90s, GM was way ahead of its time. And of course, they came out with the Cyclone in 91. They came out with the Typhoon in 92, 93. Mm -hmm. They didn't sell very well. They did sell what they well, built. Well, they were expensive. I mean, we just said they, 25, they, 25, 25 grand was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. I could buy a brand new uh, 4.3 liter um, V6 S10 four door for a fully loaded for about $18,000. Uh -huh. So that little pickup truck was a huge premium. But when I read that article, it was like, you know, here you have, okay, two competent drivers. And then I, I'm suggesting that when we get done here, we put a little drag race here. We're gonna go ahead and we'll see how the Cyclone compares to that to Shelby. Shelby Dakota pickup, okay? And then we can send it on the Shelby American, the video, and <laughs> kind of give a little jab to Gary, Gary Patterson there at Shelby American, okay? But no, Gary's a great guy. But, but that being said, in the article, it said that this vehicle could do zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Which back in, at that time, that was really, really fast. That was super fast yeah. because the brand new Corvette ZR1 that came out in 1990, 90. it could go zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. So you're telling me that this little pickup truck is faster than the $60,000 plus new Corvette ZR1? And the Ferrari, of course, let's put it in relation, a brand new Ferrari, 1991 348 TS, had zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds, wow. Wow. which was actually still a very reasonable, fast automobile. So in the article they wrote, they line them up, bring the tack up on this, 
and all of a sudden, go! Well, as you read the article, almost instantaneously, this vehicle shoots ahead and the Ferrari just sees the tailgate of the Cyclone. <laughs> and he just sees the tailgate getting smaller and smaller. But don't worry, it's a Ferrari. He's done first gear, shifts into second. Starts closing a little bit. Well, that tailgate, it's still hanging at about the same size. I'm not gaining on it, but I'm not losing on it. Third gear comes, now the Ferrari starts kicking it. And they're going, and they're going. And of course you had to flip the page to see of course. <laughs> who actually won. And the winner was the GMC Cyclone. Beats a 348 Ferrari in a drag race, hands down. So I mean, 25 grand was a lot for this pickup, but it was against a 125 grand? 125,000 yeah. Ferrari. Ferrari. Five times the price, the Cyclone beat him. Not once, but twice, but three times. Wow. Okay. Well, it, this was the fastest production vehicle in the world. Is that true? Correct. In, in 1991, this was the fastest production that, vehicle in the world <laughs> from insane. zero to 60. And I can tell you what made that so successful, not only was the engine and the power plant, but all wheel drive. Okay. Oh. They had 35% of the power to the front wheels, of course, where most of your weight is sitting. 65% to the rear wheels. With that all-wheel drive, you're not getting any wheel hop, okay? It's just it's just gripping and, and going. going wow. Okay. And so you have great straight line acceleration. And that acceleration, I can tell you, because I drove, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of miles, okay. A lot of red lights, okay. <laughs> I can tell you in all the zero to sixty red lights I ever ran. Nobody this ever beat me. No kidding. Okay. You could do it in the pouring rain. Let me say, even all weather, huh? All weather. Okay, as long as you have good tires, and like I tell people, always maintain good tires because you're riding on your life, okay? You could smoke anything even in the pouring rain, okay? <laughs> it handled great. And so people said, well, performance wise, it's like a sports car. Yeah, it is. But it's still a pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, it okay? is. Okay? And it's a pickup truck. Now, granted, I'm not going to be putting. 2,000 pounds of steel or concrete block in the back. It's rated at 500 pounds, but I actually use this as a work truck. And the one thing I did on this truck, of course, the original uh, vehicle, of course, had a Tondow cover with just snaps on it. I actually ordered a hard lid cover, fiberglass uh -huh. cover, put it on, it's more secure and, and lockable. And it, look, and it looks really cool, too. And it actually looks really nice. So you've got, what do you say, you've got over 40,000 on this? Um, it has 56,000 56, miles. I bought it when it had 9,000 original miles from the original owner for $14,000. Now this has been restored. We went ahead and we actually did a frame off restoration on this vehicle. Um, the interior is still 100% original. I mean, this, so you didn't redo the interior? Here? Nothing was done in the interior that whatsoever. Because still looks great. Um, and I tell people, if you take good care of things, uh, always kick the junk off your shoes before you get inside. Uh -huh. Vacuum your vehicle every week. You know, be careful if you're eating or drinking in your vehicle. It can still look brand new after 56,000 miles. I can't miles. believe that. I mean, that's good fabric to, to look that good at 56,000. And, and I'm not the smallest guy. No, you're not. I, I weigh 220 <laughs> pounds and I'm 6'5". And, you know, so there was a lot of weight sitting in that front seat. And that seat still looks brand new it, as it did from it the day great. it came from the and factory. And I love the gauging. I mean, it's this was the era of idiot lights. Yeah. Everything was an idiot yeah. light. But you actually have gauges in this Have car. gauges in this vehicle. Man, and oh, this man. vehicle runs at 14 PSI. Oh, really? Yeah, 14 PSI for boost. A boost, wow. Yeah. Well, let's, let's pop the hood. We must yeah. do it from the inside anyway. Yeah, we'll go ahead and beautiful vehicle. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up the hood here. And you'll see the 4.3 liter. Now that, that is packed in there. That's a lot tighter than what you just saw here with the Shelby Dodge the Dakota. Yeah, the I'll 4. say. The 4.3, definitely tight. And the beauty of this car, like they said, for drag racing, do it when it's cold. In other words, this vehicle. Dense air. Yes, you want it cooler. So if you're going to run, run early, okay, but don't try to run all day. So. It's best actually if you go out and you do racing when it's less than say 75, 80 degrees outside. Uh -huh. um, if it's actually raining out, cooler weather, it's the perfect vehicle. And like in anything today, 
you have to pick the ideal conditions. Um, you know, today in the, in the world, they always try to hold everything under perfect conditions. Like, you know, the Super Bowl is held inside an air-conditioned stadium. Yeah, but that's not how most people play football growing up as a kid. <laughs> you know, you're playing in the cold, you're playing in the hot, you're, you're, you're playing in snow, you're playing in rain, okay? That's where you really kind of separate, I say, the men from the boys, okay? You know, not this perfect condition. You know, how does your vehicle really drive in, in the real world? Well, it sounds like this one drives under any condition pretty darn good. Any condition. I drove this in the snow, okay? Great, actually, in the snow. Because you got a lot of weight over the front wheels. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All wheel, All -wheel drive. drive. And I would drive this, you know, 30 miles one way to work, come in on a snowstorm, and people said, How could you get here? Hey, all wheel drive. Yeah. Good tires. And so, you know, that Ferrari, man, Not I'd so hate much. That. I'd say if there's six inches of snow, I think you could just uh, push that Ferrari to the side of the road and say, uh, when the snow melts, uh, I'll be ready to go. So was this a reliable combo? Extremely reliable. Um, in the Blazers that I owned, uh, the 2.8 liter and the 4.3, and as well as this GMC Cyclone, I had no mechanical issues with the vehicle. Wow. Uh, very, very uh, dependable vehicle. Average about 17 miles per gallon, average fill up. Very dependable, had never any issues whatsoever from a mechanical point of view. Is it basically the same uh, turbo setup that the Grand Nationals had? Yes. Pretty much the same thing? Yes. Yeah. And all they did is they increased the cubic inches from 3.8 to 4.3. And I hear this thing still works really good too. Oh yeah. You'll be able to take this out and drive it. Well, let's do this that. This is a really fun vehicle. Let's, let's this, have some fun. This, this is a really fun vehicle. Close it up, Mark. Okay, let's, let's well go ahead. See what this baby will do. Boom, it's a truck. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, now uh, that sounds completely different. Sounds totally different. Wow. Totally different. <laughs> this thing means business, and you can tell that right off the bat. Let's do some business. What's behind you, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and most things are going to be behind you. <laughs> actually have a bug shield on this because I drove most of these miles back in Nebraska where in the summertime let's face it they have a ton of bugs. There were bugs. Ton, there were bugs. Tons of bugs. Oh I should just uh, it really throaty rumble. Great sound. This thing is sweet. For a comparable year for a Corvette this sounds so much better than a Corvette. It actually does. Even though the Corvette was literally double the price this definitely sounds a lot meaner. It, it does. It, it sounds like it means business. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Now here you sit definitely lower than in the Shelby Dakota, and definitely a lot shorter front end. And this, I mean, twenty-five grand for this truck in in uh, in '91 was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. That was a, a true premium. You know, not compared to let's say a Ferrari at 125,000. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, for an American vehicle. Yeah. Especially was, for a little pickup truck. Right. Like, you kind know. of, what are you thinking? Well, it's sort of like the the, the uh, Cosworth Vegas. It's like, what are you what are you talking about? You're going to charge that kind of money for a Vega, yeah. and then you realize what an engine it has. <laughs> But oh. it's still a Vega. It's still a Vega. It's hard to get still past that. And that was the, its problem. Yeah. It's like it was still a Vega. If they would have called it a whole different name and a new model, it could have been successful. Yeah. So yeah, I think they called it one Vega for the price of two. Yeah. Well, I remember back when gas prices were high in the late 70s, the local Cadillac dealership was advertising, buy a new Caddy, get a free Vega. <laughs> give you a free Vega so if you want to have somebody with fuel economy let them drive the Vega <laughs> yeah. and That's you know I, I you know one of my brothers who got a bunch of muscle cars before he knew it you know he had a Vega cam back and my other brother had a Vega coupe but you know or two-door hatchback and and we're like man what happened to you guys <laughs> well it was known as getting married and having kids <laughs> driving Vegas yeah, you're, one guy's driving a Vega cam back and the other guy's driving another Vega. And then he finally got rid of the Vega, my brother Johnny did, and he got a Pinto. I don't know if that's really an improvement or not. <laughs> so they did, two, what, nearly 3,000 of these? 
Correct. Uh, GMC Cyclones, they built officially 2,998. Uh, three of them actually were titled as 1992, but the rest were all 1991s. And these were only available in black. That was uh -huh. the factory color. Uh, they also built, uh, some of those actually went to the Middle East. Uh, they oh, wow. actually produced and shipped a hundred, and I think 131 of them to the Middle East. And uh, a few of them actually came back unsold from the Middle uh -huh. East. Didn't really give you the appearance of a luxury vehicle if yeah, you were yeah. an, an Arab shake. They probably gave them out to their maintenance people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think this was a, a vehicle that you had to kind of, uh, you had to kind of understand, you had to kind of know what was going on to get it, because otherwise it, it's you know it's okay, it's a little pickup, looks a, got some uh, you know ground effects on it, that's kind of cool, but eh, but then you hear it fire up and you go oh oh I see. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought it was just another decal special, uh -huh. and then finally when they you know car and driver and road and track started doing reviews on them and they said you know this vehicle actually has really good performance you know and it really does and maybe that's why they only put little decals on it <laughs> they didn't put those big body side decals on it this would be comparable to the today driving like a, a new Tesla electric vehicle we have that such faster acceleration really than the average yeah. car that's how this was. It's a sleeper too. I mean, this like it's like again. It's like oh, it's a pickup truck. Okay. Yeah, it's a pickup truck. You know. Boy, you get a little bit of turbo lag. Yeah. But boy, when that gets there, it's there. It's, and the tires are gripping. They are. You can you can really all, feel all four wheels. It just bites. Can I punch it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did and she lifted right up yeah. and it was like whoa yeah. <laughs> did you see that they just kind of lift up and go like i could feel all four wheels gripping it was just like oh. yeah <laughs> let's go 